Hi, in this video, I'm going to show how I put together this live performance case. It's one I used for a talk I gave at my local Dublin modular meetup. And it showcases the capabilities of some new modules like the PolyFX Hector and the Empress FX Euro Bureau. I'm going to talk you through how I designed it, some of the tips and tricks I came up with for making it easy to control, and along the way, we may even make some music. So let's get started. Let me start by giving you an overview of how I've constructed the patch, because it's got quite a lot of moving pieces to it. So the Tesseract Tuker is my drum and sample player, like I use it in a lot of my other patches. The main left and right output here are fed into this submixer over here, this AB mixer, which I then use to mix down a submix of various components in the patch, and then I route that into the PolyFX Hector. So I can press play here on the two crop and it's going to generate the master trigger clock out to everything else. It will send it into PAMS, which will then route that as LFOs around the case into different places. I've mapped the level of the mixer here on the two crop in the modulation matrix for each of the tracks. You'll notice that the audio level, the volume level for that track there, the kick drum is at zero here. And if I slide this fader up, Watch as the LEDs go up and you'll hear the kick drum. Each of these faders then allows me to fade in and out those tracks individually. So for example, if we go onto track two here, this will be the hi-hats. I've also mapped the filter cutoff frequency. One thing I've done, which is actually quite fun and really opens up the playability here, is I've also mapped the sample selection onto these two knobs. So actually for all four of these tracks here, I'm able to select different samples by simply turning the knob here. Now this is really powerful because you can just program one pattern with one beat with some probability on various notes, maybe a few rolls, and then choose different samples and play them off each other. You can get a lot of variation by doing just that. Let's take to listen to that in action. Now I'm going to adjust the sample by just turning this. And I can get up into hats here on the kick track. And now I can bring in a different hat sample. And see here, now we're able to play away by just changing the samples and tweaking the frequency, we're already getting into some interesting groovy territory. Let's take a listen to some of these lead sounds. So for example, I could bring up this one here. Now what I've done here is I've actually mapped the Euclidean beat parameter for the track. Now what do I mean by that? On the Tuker, you're able to obviously do standard, you know, step sequencing, you punch in a set of uh, gates and it'll trigger the sounds on those gates. But what you can also do is specify uh, a Euclidean algorithm to generate a number of triggers in a fixed time sequence. So this was very good for generating very unusual or offbeat kind of rhythms that you can play off each other on different tracks. Let me show you what I mean. So if I zoom in here now, and I'm going to go down to track four, and we hit play. Now I'm reducing the number of triggers by turning it to the left. Now I'm going to increase the number of triggers. Now that we've set up the Tukra to generate rhythms, let's look a little bit at how I'm using its breakout expander here. And this is the TEO, or T-E-O. And what it does is it lets you break out individual track audio or generate LFOs or envelopes or even a pitch CV on six tracks. So the Tuker has eight tracks, which are normally summed to a left and right stereo out. With the TO, what I can do is take the audio for tracks three and four, five and six, and route it to somewhere else in my patch setup. What would I like to do with that audio? Well, what I want to do is route it through the Q pass and the mimeophone to create this kind of dubby layered echo effect. So I'm just gonna turn down the percussion and we'll just take, for example, this lead here, this one lead on lead one. Here it is dry. You'll see that buried in here, there's a clavis mix switch. Now the mix switch is a very versatile device. 
It can be used as a sequential switch. It can be used as a CV selector. But what I'm using it for here is a very simple four to one audio mixer. So I have four different audio channels coming in, three, four, five, and six. And I'm mixing them down to a single mono output. And that single mono output's on this blue patch cable. And it goes into the left input of QPass. And QPass, the SP output goes into Mimeophone, and then Mimeophone's output goes into this submixer here. So what that lets me do is break out the audio for this track, send it through a separate processing chain, which I heavily modulate using uh, LFOs from Oct. So basically you're getting the peaks moving around on QPass, you're getting echoes here that are clock synced, because I have the clock coming out of uh, PAMs here going into Mimeophone. So we've clock synced delays here and we get a lovely dubby echo sound. And so what I've done is I've mapped this fader here to a MIDI CC command, which then generates a CV output here from PolyFX Hector and goes into the VCA input on QPass. So I'm able to raise and lower the level of these dubby echo effects. <laughs> Now, can you hear that? So what you heard there was the dry signal for both the kick and that kind of lead track coming out of the stereo left and right of Tukra, but also a parallel signal being processed through QPass and Mimeophone, which gave you that echoey uh, looping effect in the background, which I could mix in with this fader here. I could do the same thing, for example, with this bass line down here. So let's take a listen to this. The next piece of the patch I want to talk about is the Euro Bureau and how I'm going to use it. I'm not taking full advantage of all that it has to offer here. It's a very capable and powerful device, like I talked about in my previous videos, comparable to the PolyFX Hector, and I will do a comparison video between the two. What I'm using it for here is just effects processing and also some MIDI controllable uh, parameters on that effect. I wanted to take audio samples coming from the disting here from things that I had downloaded off sample packs that I've loaded on the SD card. They go into the Euro Bureau, and then that output from the Euro Bureau comes out on these patch cables here into the submixer where it goes into the final processing on the Hector. So I picked out four parameters in this patch, which I thought gave it good character and let me uh, adjust it and play around with it. And they are the character, the decay, and then a filter frequency and resonance. I added the filter frequency and resonance myself to the patch. I also want to be able to control the level. And so as I push it up, there you hear it go up. And I have a small buried in here in a massive cables. I have a small ST modular push, which is a four step sequential switch. When I press this button, it lets me cycle. You can barely see it there. Cycle through four different CV values. And those are used to select different samples on the disting. So if we just hit play now and bring up the level, it's now synced back to the clock. So we'll hear the kick. And open up the filter frequency here. Keep the phaser down. So straight away you can see I'm already now playing around with different vocal samples. I could change that to random and select different vocal samples, for example. I could send in a random sample from Pams and that would give you a totally different sound. Now I've talked a lot about the PolyFX Hector and the role it's playing here. So let's take a closer look at the job it's doing in this patch, because it is playing an essential role in just about every part of how the patch operates. Now, the first thing you'll notice about the Hector as against the Euro Bureau is the beautiful screen. It's very easy to read, uh, even here on the video with all these lights on. You can still see it pretty well. Text is small, there's no zoom feature, but if you tap on a module, it's very easy to, you know, jump into the GUI and actually make changes to the module settings. 
The other point I just want to make is I have it mounted upside down in this in this current setup here. Normally, you would have it the other way up, but the uh, the jacks on the bottom, hence why the letters appear upside down. The reason I did that was I wanted the screen to be easily accessible and not covered by patch cables. And the Hector makes that very straightforward because it has a setting that lets you invert the screen. Now, what is the Hector doing with MIDI? Well, first of all, it's a USB MIDI host. So over here on the right-hand side, there is a USB cable which plugs in to my Fader Fox. And it is a USB host, which means I don't need to have a computer or a Raspberry Pi to plug in MIDI controllers like this. In addition, it's got two MIDI TRS in and out um, jacks, so you can plug in standard MIDI TRS, which are basically stereo three and a half millimeter cables. And what I'm using it for is to route the MIDI from the Fader Fox USB connection over this basically a stereo three and a half millimeter cable into the Euro Bureau. So I'm able to control parameters from the Euro Bureau right here, and they go through the poly effects. The other thing I'm using the poly effects to do is to convert MIDI control codes from these controls here, for example, for volume or for filter cutoff. And I use the MIDI CC modules here. If I just tap on one, you can see you can change the MIDI CC number. So I've programmed in my controller. I've set up different uh, MIDI CC values. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. I'm able to, for example, use this uh, MIDI CC controller here uh, on CC number five to uh, send um, a CV value out of output number six, which is buried in here, this red cable, and that corresponds to the VCA level on QPass. In addition, I was able to build a sidechain effect here. I took the gate output from the kick and I sent it into input six here on the Hector. And what input six does is it goes into an attack decay envelope, which goes into a slew limiter, which I then push into two VCAs, which are connected to the master input, which comes off the submixer. What that means is everything on the submixer is side chained to the kick. The other thing I added was a few performance effects. Now we talked about the filter, and for that I just put two, they're called K-Org low pass filters. I think they're emulations of the Korg filters. I used a turntable stop effect. So we're able to do something fun with this. Listen to this. I wanted to bring the kick in with some sort of a drop. You know, with a bit of practice, you could get that quite clean. And then the poly effects sends the final audio mix out into the output stage here that goes into my interface. So this was a very high level tour of a fairly complex patch that took me a few weeks to evolve and build. And I thought what better way to show the capability of some of the newer modules I have, like the Euro Bureau or the Hector or the Tukra, than by putting them into a patch and playing a kind of a small set with them. Hope you found this useful. I'm gonna do more in depth uh, videos comparing Euro Bureau and Hector and how to build patches on Hector. So stay tuned for that. And if you've got any questions or have any comments and want to find out more about any of these modules or indeed any of my videos, please do leave me comments down below. Thanks for watching.